endoscopy is actually a relatively new form of technology. And essentially what it means is that we can use tiny, tiny cameras to go through a patient's mouth through the openings of their salivary glands and look for any form of disease, obstruction, or anything else that could be causing them adverse or negative symptoms that they suffer with. And the other main benefit of this procedure, of which there are many, uh, is that any obstruction or anything we find that's a problem, we can actually treat in real time, either by performing a dilation or catching a stone and removing it. So there are a lot of procedural interventional options whenever we use this procedure to really help patients. Our glands actually produce a lot of saliva day to day. You notice it when you bite into a piece of food or something really sour, you can actually feel the saliva flowing out of your glands. If that becomes blocked, all of that saliva becomes trapped and the face can swell, the gland can become infected. Uh, the infections can become severe enough that patients actually have to be admitted to the hospital. I mean, they can be, we're talking about life threatening infections in some cases. So it's extremely, extremely painful. Uh, patients who may not get to that degree, but may still have symptoms, might notice that one side of their face swells, especially after eating. And sometimes they may anecdotally just find that they have to massage it to get the swelling to go down. That can really be a sign that there's an issue going on with the gland. So whenever we're talking about tiny cameras, it's not an exaggeration. It's really the smallest equipment that we work with in our specialty. So these cameras range from 0.8 millimeters up to 1.3 millimeters at the largest. So they are very, very, very tiny. Uh, small enough that we can actually get into the gland in a very atraumatic way. It's minimally invasive. Patients do come in and they are asleep for the procedure, so it's something that's scheduled. I find that that's much more comfortable for patients, uh, but you do get to go home the same day and there really aren't any restrictions after you have the procedure. I tell people to go about their normal activity, eat a normal diet, kind of go back to their normal life. Really what I tell people to start with is massaging the gland, especially after meals. Uh, sucking on hard candies that are sour or very, very sweet because that stimulates the flow of saliva and can help overcome an obstruction. Then also using warm compresses. Sometimes we do need to give patients antibiotics as well, depending on if there are any signs of infection. Those are really the non-procedural kind of conservative measures that we always try first before offering a procedure to a patient. So currently I have a separate specialized clinic set up in the Loritz and Outpatient Center here in Omaha. I see patients who are only dealing with salivary problems at that clinic. And I'm doing these surgeries at the Fritch Outpatient Center, which is on site in the Loritz and Outpatient Center. Right now I am still seeing all kinds of patients with these issues. Uh, we have many safety measures and protocols in place to keep you safe as a patient if you're coming up to the hospital and up to the clinic. We all are constantly washing our hands, wearing masks, so I want everyone to feel safe. If they're suffering from this issue, you can still please come in and be seen. There are many reasons that the salivary glands can become blocked. Sometimes it seems like it's just random bad luck. It can really happen to anyone. But we also know that patients who have certain autoimmune conditions can be more at risk to having problems with their salivary glands. I have a number of patients who are in that situation. And then sometimes medications, if you're a patient who, you know, you're taking many medications to control blood pressure or diabetes, for example, you can have a dry mouth decrease salivary flow and that can lead to issues as well. So I think after patients go through silendoscopy, many of them are kind of shocked that they feel so much better and that it really relieved their symptoms and they're happy. And I can tell you it, there's nothing that makes me happier in offering this procedure that I see a patient back after the procedure. They're kind of like, I don't think I need to see you anymore because it's fixed. I mean, that is so rewarding for me. And, and because it is such a minimal risk, minimally invasive procedure, uh, it's something that we can offer that can really be life-changing for patients with a very, very low risk profile.